Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million strategy roundtable for entrepreneurs. 1M by 1M, as you know, is the first and only global virtual accelerator for technology startups in the world. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue. In support of that mission, we do these free mentoring roundtables week after week after week. This is the 654th session. We started experimenting with online mentoring back in 2008. And then we launched 2010, we launched 1M by 1M in its you know, full format. And of course that has continued to evolve, but the core remains and uh, online roundtables and online mentoring remain as one of the cornerstone elements of 1M by 1M. The Entrepreneur Pitch session is a safe, working session. We are on your side. There is no other agenda other than helping you figure out how to accelerate your journey. That's all we do here. So you can relax. You don't need to be nervous. You don't need to be defensive. We will speak candidly. I will tell you whatever I see, and then you can decide what you want to do with that feedback. Uh, so I am going to start the Entrepreneur session with uh, Ashani Das Gupta. Ashani, please unmute your line and let's get going. Thank you for that. Hello, everyone. My name is Ashani Das Gupta. I'm located in Kolkata, India. Uh, today, I'll be pitching for two connected businesses. One is Chinta Academy, which are, which is a human centric organization, and the other one is Panini Eight Software, which is an adaptive learning system next slide please uh, so this is the problem that we wish to solve uh, we all know about that two to three kids in the class who are really smart in mathematical science all of us have seen them they uh, raise their hand first in the class they try to solve the problems quickly and so on turns out that they are not that small in number According to a 2018 survey by PISA, around 20% of the kids across the schools have this special interest in mathematical science. And about half of them has very strong special interest in mathematical science. And the parents and the students actually notice this interest very early on, around grade two or three, according to our experiences. And then starts the real problem. The schools are not well equipped to help only 10% of their population. That's not their job. So what the parents do is that they seek out for special training for their children. And then they also have ambitions because they're looking at something special. So they have ambitions of sending these kids to some of the best universities in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem that we wish to solve. Now, our solution is twofold. One is human centric and the other one is a software driven solution. Now, as you perhaps already know that India is one of the largest talent pools in the world. And the good news is that the place I'm from, Calcutta, India, there is a intrinsic preference for intellectual activity in that region. So students are, people are interested in mathematics, physics, computer science, and stuff like that. They are interested to sit down and sit with a paper for several hours and work on a problem. So what we do is we, we bank on this talent pool and we have created a three tier mentored set program, which starts with Olympiad training in grade one. By grade nine, it goes to research programs and then in around grade nine we also have an entrepreneurial program for students where the students are assisted with software development team with hardware development team to come up with products and services that they like now this is a highly human intense process and we are absolutely fan of this entire process because we get to meet very interesting children the other part is kind of self-driven, which is software. We have a software called Panini 8, which is it is an adaptive learning system with some LLM-driven components. 
students come here, they solve non-routine problems. Mm -hmm. The software learns how they solve. And finally, they also get to be inside a community where they can talk to each other about interesting problems. This particular, I think we are looking at the previous version of the slides, actually, because the previous slide also had another thing. I'll just quickly talk about that. The software also has a thing called expert in five minutes. So essentially, the magnet is they are able to find adaptive problem solving and stuff like that in the software, but they can then buy expert live sessions, experts who are trained at Chanda, expert live sessions on these challenging areas of which are mathematical Olympiad caliber. And the real value is this, that the people who are actually doing this, they are not very large in number, they're small in number. They are from some of the best places in India, ISI, CMI, TIFR, IISC, to name a few places. And also the normal degree colleges in India, but they're rigorously trained with us. That actually creates a value because there are many so-called uh, expert in five minutes uh, kind of uh, services all across the world. But usually the quality is not that high and we bank on the quality. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, our main customers are parents of students who have a very exceptional interest in mathematical science. We have no comment on the intellectual capacity of the students but they're usually interested in mathematics, physics, computer science, statistics. They start with an Olympiad program, go into research and entrepreneurship. This entire process is, however, actively mentored, which is extremely important because- So let's go to the business model. In the interest of time, I can only give you so much time in this session, right? I have so many other people to work with. So let's go to, let's get faster. I understand what you're doing. Let's get to your challenges. Let's get to the business model. How are you going to market? What is the current state of the business? Okay, the current state of the business is this, that we have been founded in 2019. Our present year revenue is around $300,000 before tax. Mm -hmm. There is a typo which was fixed in the actual draft of the PDF file. Anyway, so there's a 25% margin before the shareholder payment. The faculty admin and software team is around 40 and we cater to around 540 kids all across the world. Is it an online program, from India. It's a completely online program, yes. Online program, okay. All of all right. are online, okay. And, uh, what, is the, what are the unit economics of this? You're making $300,000 from 540 students. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what is the pricing model? Uh, the pricing model varies from different parts of the world. Like in India, it's around 30,000 rupees to get started with, there is a premium model around 50,000 rupees. And in US, it's, yeah, go ahead. And is that a three, a just like a blanket price or is it? It's a, a blanket price, a one year subscription model. One year. And, um, but um, usually the students stay with us for multiple years because they are doing multiple things and they are looking at it as a growth map toward their university applications. That's how we position You're it. You're looking at, uh, quite affluent families who have the capacity to invest like that. In exactly, exactly. So, yes. Kids, all right. So, and, uh, and in US, the pricing model is around $1,100 for a year of enrollment. Okay. And we operate 24 hours for okay. this. And uh, customer acquisition, this is where we exactly need the help, actually, because we do not have, uh, we, we spend zero rupees on marketing. And that's the reason is this, this because we don't know how to do it effectively. Uh, we have tried with digital marketing and agencies and stuff like that, but then we stopped all, all, all of that because uh, they were not producing the required ROI. So we are currently depending on word of mouth and uh, people who watch our YouTube videos, they come to our website, fill up a form and so on. And we do have a software hardware product in mind, but uh, that's still in the idea board. And uh, that's called Slate Pencil. We have some. Let's just focus uh, on, uh, we can't do three businesses in one go. Let's focus on your uh, on the yeah. Chinya business, as you call it. Uh -huh. How, these five hundred and you know five hundred plus students. I think five hundred twenty. You said five hundred forty. How did you get these students? How did you acquire these? 
Well, I mentioned that there are three avenues, really. They watch the YouTube videos and visit our website and fill up a form and connect with us. That's one way. Uh, then we offer them a trial session and then they onboard by paying the fee. Or they come to us by, um, uh, by directly from our website, like Google search, they see our website, they fill up a form, they come. And what do you know about these students? 85% in India. Right. Are there specific schools that they are coming from? Are there specific areas they're coming yeah, from? Yeah, so for example, this data Calcutta? is actually stored in a CRM system. So we have data, for example, from which cities they are from and what kind of schools they are mainly coming from. These two data points we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm pretty sure that there is also more data like intelligence out there inside the CRM data. But uh, again, we do not know how to effectively harness that. So that is another thing. Okay. All right. So um, I'll just give you a little bit of the logic of how to go about figuring this out. And then if you decide to work with 1 million by 1 million, I'll, give, I'll work with you more closely and, and more precisely. See, you're going to need to figure out very precisely where your students are and what are the... Um, what are the parameters of those students? So there, you may be familiar with this terminology, ideal customer profile. Yeah, persona actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so now there are two things here, right? This is the student is not finding you. The parents are finding you. Yes. So you have to figure out the ideal customer persona of the teacher. I'm sorry, the parent, and then from the parent, you have to figure out the the students, students is grade level and and school, school etc. Um, so there's a there's a whole bunch of analysis that we need to do on your data, and and define a positioning. So, so right now the kind of positioning you have is not going to be sufficient to figure out a go to market strategy. Right. We need a proper positioning, and then we can come up with a go to market strategy. Okay. We have to we have to answer these two questions, right? How do we target the parents? What yes. is the ideal customer profile of the parent? How do I how do we define that? And then how do we target that? And then what is you know of course in that ideal customer prof profile of the parent is buried the ideal customer profile or I ideal user profile of the student. Right. So, which parents have children like this, and how do we identify that? This yeah. is the positioning exercise that needs to be done, and then from that we will derive what is the uh, what is the path to um, go to market. Right. Okay. That's okay. that's helpful. I do have a follow up question. Please go ahead. Uh, is it okay if I do that? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. So we almost every month we have some some of mainly parents of students who are coming to us and saying that they want to invest in the company like it's a private limited company mm -hmm. so they i mean this is a very like a very informal kind of way they say this okay mm -hmm. now i do not have any experience personally i do not have any experience with working with investors and stuff like that because i am assuming there are certain legalities involved in it and we also have to figure out exactly how to use the money and so on yeah now I'm 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 also assuming that we are a very tiny company, like three hundred thousand dollars is nothing. Now the question is that whether it is prudent to even, you know, look for outside capital and Not dilute yet. the equity. Not yet. First, figure out the business. At the moment, even though you are making revenues, I think the path to scalability is not known because you haven't really figured out the go-to-market strategy. Once you figure that out, see, taking money before knowing what to do with the money is not a good idea. Exactly. Uh, that's what my idea is. Yeah. I so, was thinking. so yeah. let's, um, it's, it's a good thing that parents want to invest. So if you decide that you want to go, uh, raise money, I will be able to advise you how to raise money and how to, you know, all of all the nuances of that. It's good that you have interested people. Um, that's, you know, that's in some ways that's a validation that these parents are happy with what you're providing to their students, their children. Yeah. Um, so keep that in your back pocket, but don't trigger it yet. 
we need to figure out other things yeah, first. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. We are going to go to. Um, let's do our, uh, Vishnu next, actually. Vishnu, please unmute your line. Go ahead. Hi, Maria. Am I audible? Where are you joining from? Uh, hi. Uh, so I'm actually from Bombay. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, I can hear okay. you fine. Go ahead. I have got what, 20 minutes? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes, okay. So just to kind of you know tell you briefly uh, the premise of this uh, business model. So there are three things uh, which has uh, sort of inspired us to do these uh, uh, so one is that kind of in the India, all of us, we know that in 1.4 billion populations and out of which kind of, you know, 1 billion population stays, resides uh, beyond top 100 cities. And uh, there are only 10% of the total population that is 14 crore people drive 45% of the consumptions. So if we have to kind of you know, reach the 5 trillion economy, uh, so we need to kind of you know, drive the consumptions for the 100, billion, 100 crores people, the 1 billion uh, customers there, one. Second, the MSME segment in India is around 65 million, out of which 36 million are the Omen entrepreneur. And they contribute almost 30% to the Indian GDP. And the objective is to kind of you know, take their contribution to 50% to the Indian GDP, so that we will be able to reach our desired goal of 5 trillion economy. Third is that India is a kind of heterogeneous market, diversified need, and any standalone company today struggling to penetrate deeper into India and get engaged with these people, with their standalone product. Um, and and uh, it so happens that if you see that uh, they, uh, it, it doesn't actually work out to be cost effective for them to kind of you know go deeper into the country and engage with this fragmented unorganized segment. These are the three uh, premise which uh, sort of kind of inspired us to build this. And our objective, there are three objectives again. One is that invest in the technology build a kind of a marketplace and integrate the digi digital tools into the traditional retail practices in rural India, rural and semi-urban towns, and build a kind of a multi-utility retail hubs, wherein, in fact, there's multiple supply chain partners comes in the, into the platform and solve the retail, uh, traditional retail shops. So there are almost 13 million Kirana stores in, in the country. Uh, Second, we need to kind of you know, empower the local entrepreneurs and especially the uh, open entrepreneurs, right? Third, we need to kind of you know, build a digital distribution network so that we can layer the products and services on that particular distribution network and access the 100 uh, crores, 1 billion people. So these are the three, three by three metrics which has inspired us to kind of you know, build this. So is they say that concept, um, Vishnu, or is it a business that is already running? Um, no, I said that this is just a kind of a premise. This is a concept which has kind of inspired us to do this business model, right? No, but is it a running business? Are you already doing business, or it's a concept? We are just in the in the formation stage right now. Okay, so it's concept. Okay, got it. Right. Got yeah. it. So the objective is to kind of you know, uh, empower the digital. Uh, digitally and financially empower these uh, small and micro enterprises, village level entrepreneurs in Bharat and empowering okay. women. Um, let me let me intercept a little bit. Please, please. Just kind of made this conversation more productive. From where I sit, it seems like you want to build a two sided marketplace. Yeah. Right. So, the, so, so tell me what are on the two sides of this marketplace? You mean to say, what are the product and services we are talking about at the supply side? And what are the yeah, demands? What, who is the buyer and who is the seller? Yeah, so we'll just go a little further ahead then for that. So next slides. Uh, no, just before that, before that. This one? No, just before that. One step, one slide before that. Yeah, so this is the market opportunity we are talking about for the products. So micro credit. This is an unreadable slide. Please don't put so much stuff on a slide. On a slide, you can put three bullet points, and that's all. 
Okay. Otherwise, the slides are useless. Nobody can understand anything. I mean, it's not humanly possible for me to eyeball these slides and derive any value. Okay. Okay. So, Got it. So I'm trying to understand something very basic, which your slides are not helping me understand is okay. who is selling what and who is buying what. So let's forget the slides. I don't like your slides. Okay. Okay. So these are the kind of you know, product and services. Sorry. Just go back. Go back. Just Go talk back. to me. Forget the slides. Just talk to me. Who is the buyer? What are they? What are they buying? Who is the seller? What are they buying? Or what are they selling? So, so the buying end consumers are the kind of you know one billion Bharat consumers in the rural and semi-urban towns. One, what they are buying is they are buying the kind of you know digital financial services and non-banking digital services. Digital financial services. So they're buying. What loans? They're buying loans. They're buying the kind of an account opening. They're buying the money transfers. They're buying the cash withdrawal. So, so it's consumers buy. It's not one billion consumers. But children don't buy loans and financial services. There is a. So here's one first thing: oh. is what is the segmentation of your buyer? So if you were to really define the ideal buyer, who is that ideal buyer? Who buys financial services in India, in rural India? And what are those services? And who are the sellers of those services? This is the two-sided marketplace we're talking about, yes? Yeah. Um, I'll have to show you the slide actually for that. Just, uh, just, just go, go, go after the slides, one slide after this maybe. Uh, next, next. Yeah, so these are the kind of a product other enable payment systems, which is, uh, which is something like, you know, rural consumer comes to the retail points in the, in the village mm -hmm. and then withdraw the cash, giving his kind of, you know, fingerprint and, uh, uh, authenticate his, uh, uh, Aadhaar number and the bank account. Right. So this is called other enable payment systems. Then uh, they buy, uh, they, they, they withdraw or they deposit the cash using the micro ATMs because there are no ATM machines in the village. So there is a micro ATM attached to this APS, other enable payment systems. They can actually bring their card and then swipe it and then take the money out. So there is a marketplace having a digital wallet and having all the suppliers, the banking partners, the insurance partners, the lending partners integrated into that systems. And they provide the services digitally and the transaction happens through the digital wallet and the consumer comes to the nearest retail point to do these transactions. Okay, so first and foremost, you should throw all these slides out okay. and start from scratch. Okay. And the first thing you say is, what is this business? Okay. How to, I'm just kind of to explain to you how to pitch this business then because we've already spent uh, eight minutes and it's, it's not easy to understand your business because the slides have been not been used well, uh, okay. presented well. So to, to, you know, in one minute, you can present this business. This is okay. a two sided marketplace for rural Indian consumers. And it sounds like not just consumers, but also businesses to access financial services, digital financial services. That's your business. Right. And it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to explain what that business is, right? If you explain it like that, it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to explain that business. Okay. Now, I'm going to push you back on the claim that you want to do consumer digital financial services and business digital financial services, small business, entrepreneur, etc. Choose one because each of them are going to have a different go-to-market strategy. So, so we are not going to DTC. We are not going to the consumer directly. We are going through the B2B channels, retail outlet. But who is the customer? Are you providing financial services to the businesses, the rural businesses? Uh, so what happens actually is retail points in the village that becomes a kind of a banking point. And the customer walks into that retail point and avails the services. So what are you selling? Is this a point of sale system that you want to sell to the retailers? It in is. Uh, so 
uh, yeah, it is a point of sales uh, for the retailers. So this is not a two-sided marketplace. This is not a two-sided digital marketplace. What it is, is a retail point of sale system that the Kirana stores are going to use in rural India. That's what you're saying you're doing. Right. So that's a yes. different business. Okay. That is a vastly different business. That business is like Square. Okay. You're familiar with Square? Quite. No, no, not really. You're not. Okay, so go look up, go research square. Okay. It sounds like what you're trying to do is a square for rural India to enable the Kirana stores with a their multifunctionality that you're going to have in the square equivalent point of sale system that the consumers are going to be interfacing with the Kirana stores through, but they, that the business model is you are selling a point of sale system. So all this blah, blah, blah of what you have talked about is irrelevant. Just focus purely on presenting this business as a point of sale system for rural Kirana stores. And then start from there, start figuring out what needs to be in that point of sale system in terms of features? And that's where your Aadhaar enabled payment system, et cetera, can come in. Okay. Is there a, an ATM concept in there? Because in, in the US, if you go to any grocery store, any grocery store basically can give you cash at the point from the point of sale system. Right. So that is also a known understood concept. If that okay. concept is something that does not ex uh, exist in India, and needs to exist in India or does not exist in rural India and needs to exist in rural India, you're going to have to work that out and figure all that out. And so, so that's fine. That is, this is a very reasonable positioning with which you can build a business. I think you have to do the comparative analysis. You have to figure out what else exists in the market, but mm -hmm. this sounds like this is the business that you are building. You're right. You have a lot of stuff in these slides that just plain confuses the listeners. Okay. And that's not a good idea. In, okay. in one minute, you should be able to say, I'm doing a point of sale system for rural Indian retailers. Right. And that has, it's, you know, one, two, three different differentiated features, functionality that does not, is not available today. And that includes other enabled payment that includes ATM this facility from the point of sale system, et cetera. Okay, got so, it. So just right. try to, you know, it, and for all of you who are listening, this is at the heart of figuring out how to build a business to simplify, simplify, simplify. The simpler it is, the, well, the better you understand what is it that you're doing, the simpler is your own understanding and your own presentation of what you're doing. You can, you know, derive all the pieces of what you need to do to execute on that business from there. Right. Okay. Okay. So take that feedback. You will have a recording system. Social sales system for the retail points to solve the Bharat consumer. Uh, yes, you could. For for rural consumers, yes. Rural. It's a point yes. of sales system for rural retailers to cater to the rural consumers. That's what you're, that's at least that's what I, my understanding is. Of you're what. right, you're right, absolutely right. All right, so that's your elevator pitch. So listen to this conversation in recording and right. maybe write it down exactly in, you know, it's a one sentence pitch of what you are doing. And that one sentence is gonna eliminate the need of many of your slides. Right. You're gonna start with that, that elevator pitch and you have, the attention of whoever is listening that this is what you're doing and then the rest of it you know okay what is in the point of sale system that is needed so now if you go talk to all the rural retailers to in your validation process you can ask them the question i'm going to build you a point of sale system what features and are these some of the features and functions that are going to help you what do you need what are the pushbacks what you know what are the requirements what are the pushbacks you have a very focused conversation with those retailers. Then you do a focus group or validation exercise on the rural consumers interfacing with those rural retailers. You ask them 
the relevant questions. That's your path forward. Got it. Okay. Got it. All right. We are going to go to the next presenter. Um, Adarsh, why don't we go with you next? Okay, sure. Thank you. So I am Adarsh Yen. I am presently in Greater Noida, which is next to Delhi. Yeah. So Northern India. We can go to next. And uh, I am 2004 IIT BHU graduate. Uh, so this is my founding team. Mm -hmm. Piyush is 2012 IIT Bombay Electrical. Then Tushar is 2021 NSIT. And Vivek is BE and MBA from India and US. Uh, you can yeah, you guys be... work together somewhere. How do you know each other? Oh. Okay, so me, Piyush, and Tushar worked in a gaming company. So I was the chief data scientist. Okay. In that, it is one of the biggest gaming companies in India called Octro. Mm -hmm. And uh, Piyush was the lead data scientist, and Tushar was a data scientist. Okay. And then Vivek was the founder of a uh, video analytics company. I mean, CCTV analytics company for around four point five years. Okay. In India. And uh, when I was starting, I sort of reached out to him to understand his experience with the market and uh, what has been his learnings. And okay. that's how we connected and right. then we sort of gelled, right? So the problem we are going after is uh, shoplifting. So shoplifting is a very big problem in all over the world, but especially in US and Canada. So it is more than a hundred plus billion dollar losses. The total losses are shrinkage. Uh, 50 to 60 percent of that is attributed to shoplifting. I mean, as per uh, NRF, which is National Retail Foundation uh, in US. So they, they officially have numbers on that. And then uh, people are forced to put like they lock up things in uh, lock and key, which if you have to shop, then ask the associate and to unlock and give you the item. So it makes shopping inconvenient and uh, Tracking shoplifting through purely human eyes is infeasible because of the cost. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's so many customers and they, they can't be equal number of associates to track each of them. Right. Now, uh, next, uh, so the solution is typically a AI investigators, which works on CCTV feed. So it acts at multiple points. So there are some old offenders right who are known shoplifters so mm -hmm. as soon as they walk store our alert goes to the security team okay this person has walked in the store along with a snapshot then user id of interest is for point of sale uh, terminal so if a past offender is doing checkout at the point of sale then our alert comes at that point okay this is uh, a past offender vehicle of interest is very closely connected to person of interest here a person uses a particular vehicle and that vehicle comes in the parking lot so to give extra time to the attendants just send an alert okay uh, this vehicle has parked into your lot right and real time theft alert is based on actions right so somebody is picking up item and putting that item in his or her pocket or purse basically mm -hmm. And second thing is somebody is trying to take the, the barcode or the security tag out of the item, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So there are RFID chips, which retailers put in the item so that if somebody tries to take that item out of the store, they beep basically, right? So if somebody tries to take that out, then uh, that is a real time theft alert. So let's go to next. Right. So basically, it is like a vehicle comes or a person comes yeah. or if a theft like uh, activity a potential theft is uh, uh, so detected right by the AI then it will send a clip right so if you go to back like there will be a tick mark or a crossbar uh, in the clip and then uh, if the user ticks so it also goes to training data basically and then they can apprehend based so so it is not fully automated so. Yeah. I have one question. Is yeah. this already something you're doing or is it a concept stage venture? So right now, this problem what I'm stating in the PPT is a concept stage. So uh, we we want you're to build it through. This. You're thinking it through. Got it. I understand. So let's um, uh, let's 
talk about the customer. You say, you, did you say, did I hear you correctly that you're planning to sell this in the US and UK and so on? Canada? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, are you familiar with the retailers in the US, uh, Canada, UK? So, honestly, I was in US for six months in 2006, but that was long back. So, okay. not really. Vivek is right now in Toronto. So, he is talking to a lot of retailers in Canada. And I have connected to our loss prevention officer of Coles over LinkedIn and mm -hmm. talked to him like uh, over LinkedIn, like not mm -hmm. face to face, but over messages. And uh, what my understanding is, it is a big problem. I mean, so. From the person I talked to, it is in a big court. problem. It is definitely a big problem. There is a, a theft has really gone up actually in America since COVID. Yes. And um, if you if you do your research, you will see there's all kinds of um, conversations or reporting on uh, the media. For instance, in uh, San Francisco, there's a very famous. Uh, part of San Francisco called Union Square that okay. had these great, beautiful stores, like very high end retailer stores. And many of these high end retailers have closed down their shops because of theft. In Union Square? In San Francisco Union Square. So do a search on Google on theft in Union Square retailers and you will see, uh, you will read a lot about this. Okay. Um, so I think there are there are a few things that you should think about is where do you want to position this product? Because okay. there is also retailers like Costco that are very different. They're not in the you know urban centers like Costco. They're the Costco the uh, 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 urban centers like the fancy stores. These right. are a very very large store. You know this is miles of store space right and um, one of the problems i'm hearing is costco has recently introduced self checkout yes so actually whole foods which is which now belongs to amazon also has self checkout so self checkout right. apparently is a huge source of theft right so so you will find all these use cases and then you have to decide what use cases do you want to go after? Because um, I don't think these Union Square retailers had self check in. They were, you know, regular retailers with regular human check in, but there was tremendous amount of theft. Right. And, and you will, you can understand that use case. You can understand the Costco or Whole Foods, who the people who are doing self check in their use case. And you're going to need to, as a starting point, you're going to need to figure out what. What is the positioning of the company? What use case are you going to solve? And what is the term around that use case? What is the competition around that use case? So right. there are a lot of different heft use cases, but you're going to have to double click down one level further down and identify all these different use cases and figure out which one, which ones do you want to go after? You're saying in the, uh, in a previous slide yeah. here in your product roadmap, you're saying person of interest. Person of interest comes in and you alert, but person of interest is doing what? Is the person of interest just shoplifting and putting it in their purse? Is it is a person of interest trying to do use self-check-in and hack the self-check-in system and uh, you know uh, steal from that through that? use case that workflow so, so person of interest is somebody who has known to shoplift previously at the store yes so even right now a store has a sort of list of faces and you know people who are known shoplifters right so there is also like people who are regular shoplifters and uh, so the human cost is huge right so no, they no, can't have that, but you have to you have to think through the workflow of what's happening in a store. Let's say a person of interest comes into Costco, which is yes. a very, very large retail store. Right. It's not possible for Costco to have security chase every single person of interest throughout the store. 
right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so at they what have... point do you catch that person and what do you check for? Okay, so basically, so suppose Costco has 40 cameras, right? Yeah. And couple of people are watching that, right? So what our idea is, where that person is going in the store, right? That particular camera pops out in the video management system. So that instead of they trying to figure out where to look, right? Mm -hmm. The attention is more on the people who are known offenders, right? I mean, that is how we are thinking and... Uh, yeah i so mean so basically we are assisting the, you're going to need Sorry. to validate with the stores of how they do things and how this is going to play in their workflow the workflow yeah. is really important the use case and the workflow is really important absolutely so the person of interest actually i was not thinking about it uh the kohl's guy told me that person of interest is what he will be really useful to him okay and then another retailer told uh, vivek in like toronto that even if you give me this much, it will be very useful to me. And he okay, showed now, it. That's great. So you have at least two people who yeah. are telling you this. So double click down on that and understand what they're going to do with person of interest. What is the workflow? How do they, you know, what, what is it that they're looking for? And okay. that will give you invaluable feedback on what to build and find another, you know, 20, 30 people in the same shoes who have the same problems and, and get, get input from them before you, before you actually develop the product. Right. And right. ask them about pricing. What, if you were to deliver this functionality to them and if it works and if it works well, what are they willing to pay for it? Try to understand the, the value that this offers to them how they how do they think of value and figure out derive from that the pricing so i did ask the course person the loss prevention officer about the pricing right so i don't think he is at he's at the position where he can decide the pricing so he told me about the losses so he said eighty thousand dollars per month is the loss in my store but on the pricing part he did not say anything okay well eighty thousand dollars if you can check eighty thousand dollars worth of losses per month you can at least one tenth of that you can charge. Right. As a thumb rule. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very, very, very valuable input that he has given you. Right. Absolutely. So, so try to get that kind of input from more people. Okay. So do you suggest like connecting more people on LinkedIn or do you suggest something else to get? No, more I think connecting on LinkedIn and if they're willing to talk is a fabulous way to do it, especially if you're in India and, and trying to do it from India, it's a fabulous way to do it. But okay. try to also understand you're saying target small stores with up to 50 stores with customized platforms, but coal is not a small store retailer. Coal is a large retailer. I understand. Actually, I mean, I was reading through the research, right? And this person's name popped out in one of the articles. So then I searched him on LinkedIn and connected him and trying to understand, right? But yeah. we also understand large stores will have a long decision cycle. So, I mean, if they are taking six, nine months to onboard us, I mean, for a startup, it is a very long time, right? So this is how we are thinking. And because you have been in the valley for so long, so you can maybe give us an input, right? So we are thinking small stores will have faster decision making because like the owner will have direct sort of losses which he can prevent and uh, he may be the decision maker sort of larger stores may have a lot lot of bureaucracy to go through before we can onboard them so this is how we are thinking but uh, of course uh, we are at the stage where we want to learn and improve and improvise talk to people and figure out i'm not convinced yet whether Small stores are ready to buy. Yeah, they have faster decision making, but are they in a position to invest significantly in, uh, you know, in a product like this, which is going to cost some money, right? People have budget issues also. Yeah, so and we can do free pilots until they see the benefit, right? So they no, will no know they lost. Pilot it. doesn't do anything. Free pilot. Ultimately, can you charge them a significant amount of money? Yes. So if, if they're never going to pay a significant amount of money, 
then that's a problem. So if a, if a small store, instead of losing $80,000 a month is losing $8,000 a month, right. then you can charge $800 a month. Right. It, but, but you have to create a pricing such that you can harvest value when you get to the large stores. Right, absolutely. Right, so you don't want to you don't want to be stuck at a price point. You have to create some kind of a um, some sort of a, a determining factor of how does the price scale with mm. larger companies, larger stores, etc. Like eight hundred dollars for small stores. What is the definition of a small store? Eight thousand dollars a month for a large store. What is the definition of a large store, etc. So typically it depends on the number of cameras because that is how the cost incurs. That's fine. Like per That's fine. per camera you have to process on GPU and GPU costs money. So there's a direct cost factor which is associated with large or small. Yeah. So we can have per camera or you know per square feet kind of those are linked, right? Per square feet and That's camera. Fine. That's fine. So, so work out those details. Let me comment on your funding. You cannot yeah. raise funding without uh without getting some stuff done. Concept financing does not happen. Right, so we have other models, right? So we have a retail analytics product, which gives footfall and engagement and other things. For this model shoplifting, we will need to raise money because we will have to first curate the data. So See, until you, you, you can say that you would need to raise money. I don't think you can raise money. Funding doesn't happen like that. People are not funding concepts. I mean, unless I know. you know somebody, unless you have friends and family or people who are willing to fund you, who know you. That's when that's the only scenario in which funding will happen on a concept. I mean, I know a couple of people who have raised funding on a concept stage from unknown funders. I mean, so maybe that gives me the confidence that if people see and they believe that we will be able to create the solution to a difficult problem, which is a large market. Maybe I, I mean, haven't seen, a... I haven't seen what would convince me to fund this company on a concept. Okay. I would like to see a fully validated product roadmap, including what is, what needs to go in there, fully validated pricing. Fully validated bottom up TAM analysis, all of those I need to see to even think about it. But even so, I think it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Is when to you say validated, you mean customer validations? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's a very, very small percentage of entrepreneurs who raise funding on concept. So if, but just be aware of the fact that you're going down a path that has such low probability that it's introducing enormous risk in your journey up front. Right. Okay. That's, that's all I would say. Okay. I'm not saying sure. it doesn't happen, but it happens very, very, very rarely. It happens more to people who are serial entrepreneurs with track record. So if I have has... I have founded a startup before and that got acquired by Razorpay. So that was that's that would help. That would yeah. help. So who are the investors of uh, of that startup? So that was Indian Angel Network and okay. a few angels. So those angels who invested in your first company are the people who should, whom you should go out to. So I have soft interest from many people in India for this. I would also want somebody from US to invest because that will help open the ecosystem and help us in go to market, right? Because I mean, only raising from India and building from the US is again, you only get the money, but every other thing is missing. Okay. So, if you, you, you're going to raise a small amount, you don't necessarily need to raise 1.2 million dollars either as the first round, you can get yeah. things going. Um, you know, get to some level of validation, get to an MVP, get to these 5, 6 customers to start doing the beta and then bring in US money. That's a very well trodden path of raising money. 
that's a very well trodden path of starting in the US, starting in India with Indian money, getting a bit of validation done, and then raising money from the US is no problem. Right. Okay. Okay. And I would like your feedback on the slides. Like, are these so slides not like funding slides yet? Okay. They're they're missing very important. Even at a concept stage, you need certain things in a funding slides, and it's missing all of that. And I I already said what is what is missing um, earlier. TAM is missing. Bottom up TAM analysis is missing. Uh, you need to understand what bottom up TAM analysis is. Um, you bottom can, by the way, can you, you just repeat uh, bottom up, bottom up TAM analysis. Okay, bottom up TAM analysis. If you just hang on, I will explain to you how to use one million by one million. That's going to help you. In in okay. your case, that's going to help you. Just to, okay. just let me finish the other two presentations, and then we will uh, we'll get to that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sivangshu, you are next. Sivangshu. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So, hello everyone, myself Sean Shukla. I just recently graduated uh, from my college in 2024 and I am a founder of College X Connect. Here, our vision is to like create a platform or a one stop solution for all the college students, irrespective of their branches, courses, and colleges. As we can see in our, like uh, in India mostly, there has been a number of platforms where you will get skill things and uh, like opportunities and all linkedin is the one of the famous for this thing for opportunities and like we are not competing directly with the linkedin so what we are building is to a platform where a student will like get the resources resources which includes academic resources where they will focus the academic part as well as the skills part where they will get the roadmaps in which the notes and the all the lectures will be embedded in it and get the uh, latest job, job opportunities update, like on uh, whatever the domain they are pursuing, if they are from BTEC, they will get relevant opportunities from B BTEC. And if they are from BCom, they will get a marketing and all the things, all the stuff. So we are just simplifying these things as we have discussed a lot of HRs and all. So we have uh, making a plan how we will uh, make this thing possible. And uh, like the problems we are facing currently is, I just told you, there has been a lot of things, a lot of resources where you will get the lot of things, but there has been a no particular like platform where you will get the academic as well as the skill part and as well as the career opportunities. So these were the problems that Indian is uh, like in India we are facing. So that's why we are creating a centralized platform where you will get the different types of feature as this has been listed in uh, like my page check, like a structured node, video lessons and PYQs. And in future, we will make a study environment room also for students where they will meet and discuss the points or whatever they wanna discuss. So as we know that like in India, the youth market is very big and uh, like there has been a 43,796 colleges in which like 43.3 million students are enrolled like in 2025 people are predicting 45 to 46 million so this market is like having uh, uh having a drastically change in last few years and uh, like government is also promoting these things we have uh, government has changed the syllabus and everything to make this thing uh, more expendable and people matlab like uh, people will uh, knowledge about these things and by that uh, they will uh, make their own startup or become the entrepreneur and all. So, so are... can, we, can we focus on on this? The who who pays? What is the business model of this? You're expecting the students to pay to subscribe to be part of this? Uh, yes. So basically, uh, it's a subscription based model, which is a uh, currently like a premium model, premium based model where you will get the like all the resources of academic free. But in like skill portion and opportunity section, there has been a two part of opportunity section where you will earn the money from your skill or either you will earn the money from your unskilled. If you are like, we are uh, uh, connecting with the different companies who conducted surveys or paid campaigns or referral programs and all, where the people who didn't have any skills will get also money from it. So 
the in the premium model you will get the access of notes and academic part but uh, if you are a premium user you will access and earn money from our website also so basically we are making an ad finance platform where you will get a little finance from by earning in this platform and the second model is the commission based model which is simple like if so the let's, uh, hang on let's try to understand what are the things that exist in the world today that you are drawing concepts from it sounds to me like there is one concept one set of concepts that you're drawing from a company like course hero are you familiar with course hero uh, yes i am uh, yeah the so course, course hero. hero's business model is not subscription course hero's business model is uh actually I is it subscription course hero i'm forgetting course hero is not coursera i mean like in coursera it's just sell not coursera not coursera course hero okay course hero okay are you familiar with course hero yes i i know course hero so course hero offers notes class notes and it's a very large site very very big traffic and they have built up over the over time user generated content tons of uh, you know tons of uh, universities have contributed content students have contributed content they have huge amount of content and that, that's one of the concepts that you are drawing from uh, then yes, it's also part of it sorry uh, ma'am it's a part of it like there has been a lot of platform like uh, course hero you are talking about they are uh, doing a fabulous job in like uh, doing a academic part and coursera is a thing like they are the providing the courses and linkedin is the top popular in opportunities so just we are the we are just creating a common platform for all the things where people won't get distracted yeah but that kind of common platform at this stage of the game is not going to work because people are going to go where the the material is you know if you want somebody to come to come for notes to your platform, you're going to need to generate that level of notes. And um, that takes a long time and, and a lot of work. So uh, that, that in itself is one set, you know, one monumental task. And I'm not saying that you cannot do it. You have to do the competitive analysis to see whether there is a gap in the market to do that or not. That's number one. Number two, if you're talking about, you know, LinkedIn kind of functionality, that is an enormous, enormous task. That's if you say that to investors that I'm going to build a LinkedIn, they're going to run away. And then third, you're talking about upward kind of functionality where it's a services kind of marketplace where people have skills and they're monetizing their skills on your marketplace. Again, why wouldn't they do it on Upwork? Why wouldn't they do it on your platform? So, but, but there's a reason, if you can present a reason why we, they should do it on your platform, that's fine. So that's what I would like to hear is that just the fact that you can do it all in one place is not a positioning. That positioning does not work. You have to provide for each of the functionalities that you're talking about. And in each of these, there are very, very big players. There are dominant players who are, who dominate those markets. So. So in that case, if those players are the ones that you need to compete with, then you have to provide a clear, you know, gap of how you position against them. And this is an enormous amount of development, enormous amount of marketing to do all of those things. Yes, ma'am. I, I literally, I mean, like in the first question, like you have asked me, like, uh, for academic so we have planned for it as we have collaborated like we have started collaborating with the top most professors from different colleges as i have conducted all these things in my last two years uh, as a student i just faced all these challenges what the student is facing so i know the things like what the things i have to resolve so we i just started collaborating with the different professors and Can just I tell you something as a student if you want to monetize your skills, your best bet is to go list yourself on Upwork. If you're trying to build a network, your best bet is to go link, uh, list yourself on LinkedIn and develop your LinkedIn presence and your LinkedIn profile. If you're looking for notes, your better bet is going 
to go for look for notes somewhere where there are notes available. So I am not convinced that taking on something like this, you have enough reason to do it. And, and it's, it's, it's a very expensive thing to do. Super, super expensive thing to do. So you, you should think about you're a student just kind of coming out of college, maybe finishing college. Is this what you want to try to spend the next five, seven, 10 years of your life? This is not going to be an easy journey. Maybe you want to focus on a problem that is, that is a more reasonable problem that you can build something, you know, brick by bricks. You know, you can build an MVP, you can start selling, you can start building this. This, I think, is going to be very, very difficult to build. So that's yes, why. Right. But... Right. Like most of uh, the investors I've talked to them, like in the last few days, they all all of them just told me like it's an ad tech platform, and as we know that like ad tech platform is not doing a well in India, and uh, the ad tech platform has no but need in. It's not an ad tech platform. What you're talking about is not just an ad tech platform. There are ad tech, ad tech components to it. But now yeah. you're taking on professional networking. You're talking taking on a two sided marketplace for. Skill monetization, you know, freelancing. This is enormous. Each of those businesses are enormous in their own right. Now you want to do all of them in one, uh, on one platform. It is intractable, I would say. Yes, man. So most of them are like told me this thing. I know this is like it's a not an easy job. I'm just when I have started this, I noticed this. This is, will be not be easy thing for me, but. What I faced is the, like, this thing, I can do it. I just have a confidence of it and I just start It doesn't plan. matter. You have false confidence. I'm sorry, but you have false confidence. Get rid of it and move on and do something that you can actually do. You don't have enough life experience to say that you have confidence in it because you don't know what's involved in this. This is completely false confidence. It's a, it's going to be a wastage of many years of your life. All right, I'm going to go to Michael next. You can ask me more questions after I'm done with Michael. I will take more questions. And I will explain uh, to you how to use 1M by 1M. So let's just hang on everybody. Let me do Michael and then we're going to go to how to use 1M by 1M. Okay. Go ahead. Michael. Oh, thank you. Apologies for being late. I was on an investor call for the last uh, last hour. Um, no. But uh, uh, Peter says hi. Peter Redford says hi. He uh, really enjoys uh, being a friend with you and and uh, um, over the years and your husband too. So uh, we appreciate uh, the insight and and uh, offer today to to, to pitch. So. Um, uh, GunSense is a uh, four and a half year old company. We are a threat detection company, not a gun threat detection company. Um, uh, but uh, we are a very unique um, uh, set of technology that I'm going to present to you today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so today, currently in the US, uh, gun violence is about $500 billion uh, of, of expense. Globally, it's, it's approaching about a trillion dollars. Um, about 40,000 deaths per year in the US alone. But this is a uh, obviously a, uh, a, a very big problem that the gun sense is solving. Next slide, please. So the team is very seasoned, uh, headed up by Peter Redford, um, uh, probably has more uh, uh, patents than I am old, somewhere in the uh, 60s plus, um, uh, very well experienced. Oh, wanna go back one slide, please. Um, so the, 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 the team is a seven serial entrepreneurs. We have about 12 exits between us. I won't get into the details of each one of them, but uh, uh, we're a very experienced team. Next slide, please. So uh, today the current technology uh, that we've developed is a fully autonomous AI vision system based uh, on the edge. So we don't have any uh, uh, need for uh, cloud or for on-premise equipment. Um, it all lives on the edge. 
And it's basically looking out 100 feet today at 190 degrees. We will go out further as we progress. Um, and you see the unit in the top uh, middle uh, of, the, uh, of the screen. It looks like a smoke detector. It mounts like a smoke detector. Uh, it'll be AC powered and DC powered um, uh, for production, and that's almost ready. Um, so once we have a, a detection, our AI is about 99.2% accurate today, and we're getting closer to that uh, 100%. Um, uh, once we detect that weapon, uh, it takes about a 200 milliseconds. We basically uh, alert first responders through the 911 um, application through the FirstNet Authority, which is a proprietary government network, uh, only available for first responders and government employees, not for the commercial use, but they came to us and said, you're the perfect poster child of why uh, we have developed this. So we send a piece of metadata out to 911 dispatch, which is longitude, latitude, and a Z axis. Um, that bounces off of our cloud and comes back as an app on your iOS or Android, or as you see in the uh, right-hand quadrant of the picture, um, in a police cruiser, and it shows them exactly within one or two seconds of the detection exactly where the threat is. Um, you see in the bottom right-hand corner, there's actually a map of a, uh, or a floor plan of a school showing where the perpetrator is and his movements. Um, why this is important is everybody knows that uh, the police don't show up uh, instantly to these events. They have to get a live person on a phone to say, yes, I see a threat. And that takes 5, 10, 15 minutes, plus you've got uh, you know, the time to mobilize SWAT and other police forces. So what so we Michael, do... I have a, a, a kind of dumb question here. Yeah, please. Uh, somebody who is in the process of trying to shoot is not going to be... You know, 5, 10, 50, if their first responders come 5, 10, 15 minutes later, the crime has already been committed by that time, no? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely it is. Um, and that's why we alert first responders in the field and the general public uh, instantaneously. Within a second or two, they get the alert long before dispatchers have returned the sirens on. Uh, so who are you? I'm sorry, I don't understand the workflow of this. Who Whom are you? Alerting, I thought you were alerting the first responders. Whom are you so, alerting? So we're alerting first 911 dispatch. So that's okay, 911 dispatch is going to take five, 10 minutes to come. Yeah, five, 10 minutes to come. They do their due diligence. In that same couple of seconds, we bounce it off of our cloud and now we send it directly to police forces in the field. So if we take the Tennessee shooting um, that happened earlier in the year, um, we know from communication with the FBI that uh, uh, this perpetrator showed up in the parking lot 17 minutes before the doors got shot down. Um, we would have detected them at the, the minute the first weapon came out of the car. So that was about minute, let's say, 1630. And our alert would have gone out to 911 dispatch. It would have gone back out to the general public and to first responders in the field within a couple of seconds. So at okay. minute 1625, we know from FBI there were several police cruisers in the vicinity of the school, a mile or two away. They could have been at the school within a couple of minutes versus the 15 minutes it took them to get there after the first shots were fired. Okay, um, so your your system is is monitoring parking lots is the bottom line it's monitoring everything within the building inside outside of the building so it doesn't matter um in the bottom right hand corner you see if you go back to the slide um if you go if you look at the bottom right hand corner there's that key marker in red in the bathroom at the school um FBI data says that these perpetrators stage either indoors or outdoors, and but bathrooms are a, are, are a, a location that staging occurs, and FBI tells us that's anywhere from 30 seconds to 18 minutes. We don't violate privacy. We're not looking for- I was for, just about to ask, is it, is it legal to put cameras in bathrooms? Yeah, because we're not, we're not looking at people. We don't care about gender, race, creed. Um, we're not looking at that. We're looking at the data that a weapon actually produces. 
Um, yeah, but you, you're going to have to get the camera feed to be able to identify that data. Nope, absolutely not. Uh, that's the whole premise of our equipment is that we aren't feeding that video data anywhere. There is no video feed. Um, what happens is we take uh, 60 frames a second. That first frame comes in. Um, it gets analyzed at the edge, at actually in the unit. Um, now the next frame comes in in 1 of the of a second. It deletes the first frame. So there's never any data actually stored within the unit. So we're not yes. looking for people. Um, we're looking at data. We're not looking at people. So if you actually could, which you can't, um, uh, hack into this, there are no hack points on it. Um, if you hack into it, it basically breaks it and calls home and says, um, mm -hmm. you know, somebody's tampered with me. Um, even if you were able to get to that point, what you would be looking at is 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 a data stream and not a video stream. Okay. And do you have these systems running in any schools right now or any any public places? So we were tested by AT and T um, uh, several times. Uh, we were about to ship our first products out, and I'll get into uh, traction pretty quickly. Um, why we are important in the in the marketplace is is we are autonomous. Um, we are uh, uh, completely. Can you go back a slide? Sorry. So we are fully autonomous, um, and there is nothing else out there in the market like it. So the the current competition is audio surveillance, looking for for shot detection. Uh, so they're listening for it. Um, obviously, too late because. The, the, the bullets have already left the gun and, and the damage has already been done. They're very expensive. Yeah, um, it's interesting. So uh, there's also the evolves of the world, which is the turnstiles you see at airports and the like. Um, very inaccurate. Um, uh, they're being sued for inaccuracy at this point. Um, they've asked several schools to, uh, uh, to, to ban three ring binders because they can't tell the difference between a three ring binder and a weapon. Um, it's a bit of a joke. Um, now we have larger. Can you go back a slide? Uh, so, in in the interest of time, Michael, let's uh, let's get to what uh, what are you looking for? What what brings okay. you here? Yeah. So uh, let me just give you an idea about what our attraction is, and and start with that. What is that? So, what, do you, do you need me to forward the slides to attraction? Uh, yeah. If we go back a slide. Um, now, so. Uh, so what we have today is we have um, we've signed a, a a deal with a global Fortune 10 customer. I can't tell you who it is. It's not for public, um, but uh, they have about uh, 2,100 facilities globally, about uh, almost 800 million square feet of facility um, across the globe. They want us for uh, perimeter protection and uh, facilities protection um, across the globe. So we are delivering our first unit to them uh, this month. Uh, we are delivering another bench and pilot test with updates that they have requested in October, and they anticipate that we'll be in production by Q1 of next year. They could do my three-year number uh, just by themselves. Uh, we're talking. And what is the so? Is this a company that has experienced uh, premise violence before? They have a high degree of violence. They're worried about gun violence. They're worried about, uh, uh, you know, domestic uh, incidences where husbands and wives of, uh, you know, are, are, are attacking facilities. Uh, they have a very large commercial fleet of vehicles, about 120,000 commercial vehicles that they want protected um, because those get robbed at gunpoint on a semi-regular basis. Um, yes. So that's our first one. We have lots of schools um, who have ordered uh, uh, pilots, both paid and uh, for evaluation. We have several large uh, houses of worship, uh, Texas and California. Uh, retail stores like Macy's want us for for protection of perimeter. Yeah. Um, we have um, any numbers of uh, of, of uh, commercial buildings, retail. Um, 7-Elevens and the like, all, all looking for this first pilot uh, unit to come out. Uh, we've been baked into a um, international airport in the, on the East Coast. 
uh, for their new terminal, which is going to be 15 gates. Once that's approved, we are um, uh, already uh, baked into the whole right. airport. So what, what, I, what brings you here? How can we help? So we are raising a, uh, a second round. We, we, we raised a, um, uh, we raised a, a million dollar uh, seed round early on. We've got about uh, almost 700,000 of that, uh, 300,000 left. We have an, an A round of 20 million, um, and we'll take that in several tranches. We're looking for that first uh, 5 million. That will get us to uh, cash flow positive and profitability in uh, about um, 18 months. Okay, so um, it's all right, got it. I will uh, explain to uh, for everybody's benefit how to use 1 million by 1 million. And I think that should answer your question then. Yeah. So, uh, everything, as you know, 1 million by 1 million is the is a virtual accelerator. You can access it from anywhere in the world. Everything is at 1m by 1m.com. Uh, our premium program is the full acceleration program. And those of you who are looking for investor introductions, you need to be in the premium program. You can go to the website and look up what the premium program is all about, what are the investor introduction policies and so forth. The, in the premium program, we do strategy consulting, we do investor introductions, we do, we have the curriculum and we do a certain amount of influencer marketing because of my influence in this industry. Um, strategy consulting happens in this kind of mode, uh, you know, but they're private sessions, members only. And a lot of the strategy work that goes into preparing slide decks that can be sent out to investors happens in this mode. So, you know, as you know, if you're trying to raise money, you will need a slide deck that fulfills the requirements of investors. That's where we can in that process. And in some cases, slide deck is the ultimate product. There is validation work that needs to be done to go into that slide deck because, you know, basically validation is a must. Nobody is interested in funding anything these days unless you do validation. So that validation is super important and you need to, you know, build that validation into a fundable pitch and and all that strategy work goes happens in the premium program there is also a basic program so if you're in a very early stage and you need to really learn how to put one foot before the other by way of you know this just kind of like an mba in uh, technology entrepreneurship so to speak you could also do the curriculum only in 1M by 1M basic. So Shivangshu, my suggestion to you is go do 1M by 1M basic before you jump into this idea and maybe use the knowledge you gather to come up with a different idea. This is, I'm not at all convinced that your idea is gonna fly. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, Michael, your situation is different. You, you guys are much further along, so that's a different story. If you want to work with 1M by 1M, your best bet is to join premium. Um, so, so that's it. That's the, the website has a ton of material. Uh, we have got a lot of requests for one on one consulting private. So even in the premium program, you are, you are going to be in a, uh, you're not in a public environment like we are here, but you're in a members only environment. So it's not a one on one, um, level of privacy. So we have re received requests of that. We do some amount of that work and that's available through the one-on-one -on -one consulting, you know, facility in, uh, in the program. You can read about that on the website as well. So we have two more free roundtables coming up this month, September 19th and September 26th. If you have questions about the 1M by 1M program after this session, your contact is Irina Patterson. Irina at 1M by 1M.com, or you can text her at 786-301-2456 and she will talk to you. Um, we have a bit of time to take more questions now that you have gone through some amount of feedback and, and understand how 1M by 1M works, I hope. 
uh, you can ask questions. Other, she's asking, what is the cost of one-on-one -on -one consulting? It's $1,000 an hour. Premium is $1,000 a year. Basic is $99 a month. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Adarsh, Ma Maureen is giving you some feedback from Target in New Jersey. Did a big self checkout change and now they have completely reversed due to theft. I'm hearing this a lot actually. Uh, so when you test your, um, you know, prospects, ask them about self checkout and, you know, even if it's a known person, if that known person is, uh, is likely to use the self checkout to to steal that would be an interesting use case to build into your product absolutely thank you anybody else any other questions uh, no? which would be applicable for me uh, this is vishnu uh, which yes, which premium or the basic one Vishnu, I think uh, basic is not going to be sufficient for you. You're going to need some, uh, you know, mentoring, consulting, whatever you call it, coaching, mentoring, consulting. I don't care what you call it, but, you know, project based advice. So I think premium would be the best for you. Okay. Okay. Um, I see Jude on the panel. Jude, do you want to ask questions? Yeah, uh, so yeah, I was very curious about the session and I, you know, uh, just joined and uh, it was amazing uh, pitches uh, by uh, Gunsense and uh, other uh, startup pitches as well. So, uh, yeah, I uh, just want to know, like, what's what, what kind of roles like uh, the upcoming GPT and AI plays in, uh, you know, uh, so yeah, uh, my basic concept, it's more like building a voice based gpt for uh, the business uh, in 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 the scenario so like uh, i i don't know like how do the startups right now like in us envisage about like having a gpt or uh, you know in, Richard, in... Uh, i think for you one and by one and basic would be a very good starting point to start learning how businesses are built and you will find yeah. whole modules of artificial intelligence you know, we have oh, our great. curriculum is organized as core and uh, elective. On the mm -hmm. core side, you will have seven big topics and lots of subtopics under those. Those are uh, bootstrapping, positioning, customer validation, market sizing, mm -hmm. team building, financing, and um, what did I miss? Customer acquisition. Okay, and great. On the electives, you have all these different domains where there is a lot of entrepreneurship happening. Mm -hmm. And artificial intelligence is one of the most active areas where we work and where we have tremendous amount of curriculum. So my yeah. suggestion is as a first step, go to one and by one and basic sign up and start doing the curriculum. At that point that you want to start engaging with me on an interactive basis, you can upgrade to premium. Yeah. And uh, one other question was like, uh, does this session occur like every week? This session occurs every week and then wow. premium sessions also occur every week. Yeah, this, this is wonderful. And yeah, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay, great. Good to see you. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, the others, is there any rough estimation of introductions we can expect as a part of the premium program? Um, you know, we work with probably over 500 investors. But there is a concept, as you start doing the curriculum, there is, you will see there's a concept that we emphasize greatly, which is investor entrepreneur fit. So not all investors would invest in everything, right? There's stage related fit, there's domain related fit, there's geographical fit, there's all kinds of uh, business model fits. So we will, you know, we will introduce you to people who are, who are fit for you. So, you know, in our program, in one afternoon, in one hour, people have been given 30 introductions to investors. And that is incredibly productive, right? You, there aren't many places where you can go to get 30 relevant introductions in one shot. And people have found that very, very productive. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, so... 
uh, that 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 what you're talking about, Sermano, is um, in the premium package. Is, it's in premium. Yeah, industry impressions is in premium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, because we are so far along already in our in our process, and we have quite a bit of uh, attraction and and ready to go to market. Um, when when does that introduction process start? I mean, you have to go through a a, a training process to to get no, to that point. Just, or? It depends on where you are, what your starting point is. We just need to get to a pitch that is like your pitch is not an investor pitch. Your pitch doesn't have a bottom up time analysis, and I will never send a pitch to investors without a bottom up time analysis. So I will tell you if you're in the premium program, I'll tell you. What is missing? We will. I will work with you to fill those gaps, and as soon as you're ready, we can start introductions. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right. Well, great roundtable. Excellent pitches. Enjoyed working with all of you, and look forward to continuing to work with you. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, and bye bye. Thanks a lot.